A massive rescue and relief effort is underway right now in the Bahamas, where there is widespread devastation. At least 20 people were killed there, and our lead national correspondent, David Begno, traveled to the hard-hit uh, Abaco Islands to get a first-hand look at the destruction. He joins us now from the Bahamian capital of Nassau. David, what did you see? Well, Tony, what we saw was people sitting on the tarmac in Treasure Key waiting to be rescued. We're in Nassau, which is the capital of the Bahamas, and there are more planes on the tarmac this morning than there were yesterday. Every one of these aircraft is being used to either deliver aid or to pick up people. We were able to get five seats on a medical charter that was looking to find people. They dropped us off on what was an abandoned runway, and when we landed, there were close to three dozen people waving for help. Never ever seen anything like this. This was just, just so far beyond anyone's imagination. Shock and horror. Everything you had, yeah. everything's gone, everything. While waiting to evacuate the island of Treasure K, locals told us their stories of surviving Hurricane Dorian. The wind sounded like a huge tornado coming. The roof went off. We had to run to another house. The Red Cross says nearly half of the homes on the Abaco Islands and Grand Bahama are damaged or destroyed. Are you trying to get out of here? Nancy Albury was one of the dozens of people who showed up at the airport asking the various pilots who kept landing here if she could get a seat off the island. Her home was in a nearby community called Man O' War. This is what it looks like now. She rode out the storm in her home. The house had broken up around us. When we cracked the door open and there was nothing we found Cynthia Gideon sitting with her three children on the roof of a building that had blown off during the storm. What are you going to do tonight? Nothing. I want to go to Nassau. I don't know. She didn't get out last night. The family was going to sleep on a slab of cement inside of a heavily damaged, abandoned home near the airport. Someone had given her and the kids bread and water bottles. Oh my God, this is the airport is also serving as a meeting place for relatives and co-workers. I'm just happy to see them. When you see what's left of your home, what do you think? We got to get out of here. We can't live here. Like, we got to go to somewhere safe, like in the States, or somewhere where there's no hurricanes and no tornadoes. Just about everyone evacuated from a disaster zone is airlifted to the capital of Nassau, which was not damaged by Dorian. All of the survivors sent here are triaged and either sent to a hospital or somewhere to find a place to sleep. It was a harrowing experience. It's difficult even to try to put it into words, but it was just unparalleled. Those people are also hungry, and I wish I could get this word to them, but of course they have no cell phone service, no television. I just heard from Chef Jose Andres, who says he and his team will be flying to Treasure K today with food that they are going to deliver. Uh, listen, Tony, before I toss it back to you, a uh, big thanks to the folks at Medic Corps. Many of them come from northern Arkansas. They brought their plane here and literally have just volunteered to go and land on runways that really weren't even cleared for landing and land, see who needed help, and get them out. A soul so many Samaritans doing incredible work here, including the U.S. Coast Guard, which has really led the effort to rescue folks. Yeah, a lot of important work there, including yours, David Begno, for us in the Bahamas. David, thank you very much.